all right then welcome back everyone let's solve this question distinct split i hope you have solved this question because this is frankly a very simple question uh, i think this is maybe a 900 rated question according to me but anyway we have to complete the playlist right so i hope you have read the question once but i'll summarize the question for you in the question they have given this fx uh, what is this fx is it spits out a uh, number of distinct characters in this string x they have defined this function as uh, f and what we have to do is we are given a string s uh, whose length is n and we want to uh, split it like a non empty split should happen into a and b uh, the split is happening in a way that after i concatenate that is i put a b like this i should be able to get s back again right so first i have to perform this non empty split a b in such a way that uh, a plus b is s so what i mean by a plus b is if you just put a followed by b then it should become s right and there is one condition uh, you want uh, to split this in a way such that uh, this f of a plus f of b is maximized right you want to perform this non empty split into two strings a and b such that f of a plus f of b is maximized that is number of unique characters like the sum of number of unique characters in a and number of unique characters in b should be maximized so that is what they are after right input is a uh, pretty simple the string s and its length and uh, for each uh, test case what we have to print the maximum possible value of f of a plus f of b so what is f of a uh, the number of distinct characters in this a and the number of distinct characters in b is a f of b now we want to maximize this f of a and f of b looking at the constraint like it's like the n value over all test cases does not exceed 10 to the power 5 so it gives a hint somewhere that you can go as far as n log n right so you are just getting sense of the constraints here so let's try to uh, make some observations so firstly uh, the split is non empty right the split is non empty so that is one observation okay now this is one observation the split is non empty now what should be your approach right you want to split s into two strings a and b in a way that f of a plus f of b that number of unique characters in a and number of unique characters in b their sum should be maximized now what should be your approach the way i thought this question is again i like this similar to previous question i thought what is a brute force can i implement the brute force in optimal way and turns out i was able to do it right so what is a brute force here uh, i don't know how to split it because a string can be made up of any number of characters right so i guess they have written it is only consisting of lower case english letters so string can be anything like a b c b b a x y w something like this i don't know whatever the string can be now i don't know where to split but i know for the fact that the split has to be non empty so i can maybe split here i can put a split here i can put a split here i can put a split here or something right so there can be like how many possible combinations of splits are there because in the end uh, in the end this a and b are such that once you combine them that is once you place a followed by b it should become s right so if a split is here this is the value of a and this is the value of b if a split is here this is the value of a this is the value of b right if a split is here this is the value of a this is the value of b so how do you split it so i don't know how to split it so i know for the fact that there are order of n possible splits right 1 2 3 4 5 so on till here so these many splits are there so you can split up to zeroth index you can split up to first index you can split after second index so on and you can split after n minus 1th index why not after nth index because the splits have to be non empty right so the brute force what was the brute force that we come up with so this is the brute force right try splitting in every possible way right after zeroth index first index so on till n minus 1th index and take the split which maximizes the f of a and f of b So how do you approach this? So I told you try splitting in every possible way. So in other words, try splitting after try splitting uh, like instead of this in. So I'm just trying to simplify my language. Try splitting after every possible index. So what all the every possible way or I should write here every possible index. So what is a, every possible index in zero till n minus two, right? So I'll try to split after zeroth index. first index second index third index fourth index so on i'll try to split after what is this index this is n minus 2th index right so this is n minus 1 index so these are all the possible uh, splits right so these are order of n splits for every possible split uh, for every possible split find the value of f of a plus f of b right find the possible candidate right so this is our candidate find the possible value of f of a plus f of b and consider the one which yields maximum value right i guess it is simple right so you are given a string here you are given a string here Uh, you try to split uh, split it after every possible guy and here you find out one candidate here you find out one candidate here you find out one candidate here you find out so on so you will have some order of n candidates and you will take the maximum one of them you can maintain a running max right you can maintain a running max maxi 
and this max c will be c1 max of c1 c2 c3 c4 right so what are the c1 c2 c3 c4 uh, these are you can say the local candidates right so what is f of a plus f of b for this split what is f of a plus f of b for this split so you can take maximum all of them now now the approach is there for every possible for every possible candidate uh, you find out f of a plus f of b and uh, you take the maximum of all the possible candidates right so you have some order of n candidates c1 c2 c3 c4 c uh, cn minus 1 you just take maximum all of them now my question to you is uh, how do you find out the value of a given candidate so for a given split how do you find out this f of a plus f of b let's take a general example uh, i don't know if you are uh, aware of this technique or not so i'll explain it from scratch anyway so what we are after is uh, for a given split that is let's say after some index here i don't know which index that is so whatever index uh, you want to find out uh, so this part is a right this sub array is a and this sub array sub array or substring whatever both are same thing here uh, without loss of generality here so a and b what you are after is uh, for a given split you want to find out f of a plus f of b right uh, what do you want to do like we are thinking about brute force here right so don't think about optimized version here uh, what is f of a uh, by the way uh, number of unique characters in this part right number of unique characters here that is what f of a is and f of b is number of unique characters here right so how will you do it uh, if i like in dumbest possible manner you will of course uh, create two sets right you will create two sets you will create two sets and you will add all the elements of a here and add all the elements of b here and f of a will be set one size and f of b will be set two size so this is the dumbest way possible you will do it but what will, the, what will be the time complexity for it the time complexity will be n log right and for every possible candidate if you try to do this the total time complexity becomes a uh, order of n into n log n so the time complexity becomes n square log n and this will definitely not pass uh, the constraint of 2 into 10 power 5 so can we do better here uh, to find out number of unique characters in a and b for a given candidate i'm consuming order of n log n time can i be smart and uh, reduce it time turns out i can be smart uh, and how i'll show you now okay so here i have taken a simple example here a general string here uh, to simplify things so what i'll do first is uh, what i want to find is number of unique characters in this part and number of unique characters in this part right so what will be the what will be my first candidate uh, my first candidate will be this right this will be my first candidate so here out the approach uh, this is a very common approach uh, that is being used this is called a sliding window approach but more formally we'll discuss it in maybe in 1100 rated questions but what i'll do is uh, if you don't know hear me out see what we'll do is we'll create two maps here okay uh, one map will hold all the information about the elements in a and another map will hold uh, uh, it will be basically a frequency map of all the elements in b right so that will be the purpose so first map will always hold at a given time at a given split the frequency map of a and this guy will always hold uh, the frequencies of all the all the characters in b how are you going to construct it i'll show you now see initially at the first split at the first split how should this map look like this should only have one element right this should only have x uh, with a frequency of one right and how should uh, this map look like b uh, this b should have all the elements but this uh, value of x right that's what it should have so it will have uh, for y it will have one for z equals to it will have one for a it will have a frequency of one and so on right so till uh, whatever till g it will have a frequency of one now at this point uh, what will be the value of our candidate so what will be the value of this uh, c1 it will be simply uh, the size of this map plus size of this map right simple right so because the size of this map will be number of unique elements in a and uh, size of this map will be number of unique elements in this split so right now i'm talking about this split i'm not talking about a general split right now for this split this map will hold all the like number of unique elements the size of this map will be number of unique elements in this part and uh, this map will hold the number of unique elements in b right now once i move ahead so this is how you can find right so first candidate you can find like this once i decide to move ahead now my candidate becomes this right this is my candidate becomes now once i move ahead what i can do is i can add y here and i can remove y from here right so now automatically you can see one thing uh, a's map a's frequency map size became 2 and b's frequency map size was reduced right you can calculate c2 similarly you will move ahead similarly you will move ahead when you move ahead you can add z here and you can remove z from here so what does this what does this process ensure what does this process ensure whenever you move ahead 
you will remove that entry you will remove that entry from this map and you will add that entry here so what does this process ensure is at a given time at a given time whenever you are here whenever uh, you are here this map will hold the frequency map of a and this map the second map will hold the frequency map of b and this operation of removing an element removing an entry from here and adding an entry in here right right now like we are not technically removing, we need not remove it every time, but if all the elements are unique, you will remove an entry from this map and add an entry here. So that will not consume more than log n. Right. Uh, hear me out. We were consuming to find out the candidates earlier order of n time. And right now, to figure out a new candidate, we are only consuming order of log n time. Right. So this you already saw a time boost here. Thus, by using order of log n operation for a given candidate, I am able to get the value of f of a and f of b. Right. Like removing an entry from here and adding an entry here this you can do so at a given point this process ensures you have frequency map you have frequency map of a and b right and in just order of log n uh, per candidate so this automatically says that now you have an order of n log n solution right and why do you think i need not remove an entry every time here so why am i maintaining maps and not sets because these values may not be unique you may be having something like this right you may be having some so many x's here right you may be having so many x's here so x can have a frequency of let's say here one two three four five right so you will not remove x from here until all x's are gone right so number of unique elements number of unique elements in a will be uh will be one till like till this split right so i guess yeah that's why you maintain maps you don't use sets this is a very simple strategy uh, you maintain two maps and you update a map in just order of login and at a given time you will be able you will be able to uh, get the number of unique elements in a and b and you, this is, you can find your candidates i hope you get it if you haven't get it uh, don't worry i'll explain it one more time during code but that's the idea uh, for every possible index take the split with maximize f of a plus f of b now, the brute force way of finding f of a plus f of b was uh, using n log n time but that we cannot afford so why is it using uh, this two map approach you don't call it sliding window you don't remember new things it's a fundamental thing you maintain two maps and whenever you move ahead you will update the map in just order of login and this is uh, what uh, gives us a boost in uh, time complexity and now in just order of login per candidate you are able to uh, find out f of a plus f of b and why are you using maps and not sets because there can be duplicates what i try to say here is uh, for this guy this uh, this this b's map will contain a will contain a unique value of x Right, so there will be uh, x equals to uh, 4 at this point. Once you move ahead, x will be 3. Once you move ahead, x will be 2. And then once you come here, x will be 1. And once you are here, now you can remove x. You will not remove x every time. You will only remove x when you don't have any copy of it. Right? Fine. So that's that. Let's just quickly see the implementation for it. Okay. Uh, so I've already taken the input, uh, the length of string n and the string s. Now, I'll deliberately take some time to explain this explanation because I assume a lot of you may not be familiar with this strategy of uh, figuring out a frequency map uh, in this one operation. That's why. Uh, if you are familiar with it, uh, feel free to like speed me up or something like that. Okay. Otherwise, <laughs> thanks for watching. But yeah, so what we are after is uh, for every possible candidate, that is n candidates, order of n candidates, we want to figure out f of a plus f of b optimally that we cannot uh, afford it. To do it in n log n right by making two sets and finding it finding it out so uh, we need a way to find frequency map uh, not just ordinary sets will work here because of the presence of duplicate elements right you won't be able to keep track whether to remove an element from a set or not uh, because if there are duplicates how will you figure out uh, whether i have to remove an element from uh, frequent like the set of a and whether to add an element to set of b so i'm not sure about it right so that's why i need maps here not sets Right? But the brute force involved using sets. So that's a difference here. Fine. Of given candidates A and B respectively. So how do you approach this one is uh, you first need to create uh, two maps here. right? So map of uh, it will be char of int. Right? So because it stores the frequency map of our candidates. I'll name it very good way. Uh, left and right. So left will be the frequency map of A and right will be the frequency map of B. For a given candidate of course. Now initially uh, left will be empty. right? So initially uh, so what i'll do is i'll make a right to hold the fre frequency map of s right for our first candidate uh, i know for our first candidate uh, the frequency map will look like uh, considering only the zeroth character and the frequency map of right will be uh, having information from first till n minus 1 character 
right? But first, I have to start from somewhere. So I'll initially populate right uh, with the frequency map of S. Now, before uh, considering the split, I'll update these maps, maps left and right, right? So what I'll do is I'll initialize uh, the score or maxi. So any which way you know that uh, the minimum value of score will be two, right? So whatever split you do, any which way there will be one unique element in A and one unique element in B. So the minimum value of score is two. If you are like confused, you can maybe start from one, but I guess this is very obvious, right? So uh, if you put any split, uh, you will have, uh, I guess the string the size was greater than two. So whatever split you do, uh, you will always get a score of two. So this is a minimum possible score, right? So what I'll do is uh, I have to split after zero till n minus one. So till n minus two index, right? So I'll try to split after, try to split after zero till n minus two index. So that's what I'm trying to do, right? So I'll try to split after every possible index. We need to update our maps, right? So before the first split, I have to update our map. So you know that uh, before the first split, this left will contain uh, left will contain this current character, right? Uh, this current character has to be included. So what is that current character? It is simply S of i. So right now i is zero. So zeroth character will be included, and this this character's frequency has to be reduced from the right member, right? Because initially right contained the frequency map of S. Now before I consider the first split, that is after the zeroth guy, I have to add this S of zero. I have to add this S of zero. So I'll maybe write it here: zero, one, two. Three, so on, right? So I have to first add this guy into our my left map, and I have to remove that guy from the right map. So it's not convenient to just do something like this because what if the frequency has become zero? Then you might have to remove it from your map, right? So I'll write a very uh, clean code here. What I'll write here is right of if right of ch is one, then these elements need to be removed from our map, right? So this element will be removed from our right map, right? So if let's say uh, uh, there was only one element, let's say A, and there was no A present here, then uh, this A has to be removed from the right map, right? So if the frequency was one, I'll simply remove it, else right of CH minus minus. Or maybe you can check after doing right of CH minus minus, if it has become zero, then you can erase it. So whichever way is fine to you. So we updated our maps. So now left and uh, right, left and right are frequency map of current split, right? So what will be the current score? What is the local score? So it will be like, let me just name it very aptly, candidate. So what will be the uh, value of candidate? It will be simply uh, size of left and size of right. So this length is simply left dot size, okay? I guess you already know it. I have already defined, uh, uh, hash define above, fine. So this is simply f of a and f of b because left and right are frequency maps for current split. And candidate is this and we'll update our score, the max of score and candidate, right? Fine. And uh, when the next time we come, the next bit will be after one. So we'll update left of S of I, left of, so this frequency will be updated for this character and we will try to remove it. We'll try to remove it from the right map. So we'll try to reduce the frequency, right? Uh, if it is more than one, but if it is one, we have to remove it, right? So after every, uh, for every split, we first update our maps. And once we update our maps, we have the frequency map of left, like A and frequency map of B. And now we can update our score. It's simply F of A plus F of B. F of A is nothing. Uh, size of our frequency map of left and size of frequency map of right. And so I'll just in the end print this code followed by new line. I guess it works. I'll quickly submit it. It works. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.